Welcome to the biggest, best live stream ever. We have major news breaking today, new records for gold, but there's a lot more to cover, maybe a little controversial subject matter as well. But guys, it has been an absolute crazy day in the precious metals markets, and we have more fun to come. I'm going to tell you why during this live stream. Thank you for being here. Thank you you for being a basement dweller right now. We've got the big show and let's dive in right away. I want to share with you something. I'm not prepared. Bear with me. Bear with me. Okay. And share. <laughs> Here we go. I want to share what we can take as good, good news. And that's this. Bloomberg. Article, spot gold rises above $2,200 an ounce for the first time. Bullion has gained almost 7% this year uh, after the Federal Reserve Chair suggests easing at some point this year. We're going to go on to talk more about gold and try to get me to part with some of my hard-earned money so I can read you this entire article. But the point here is Bloomberg, Reuters, Yahoo Finance. Finance, CNBC, all of them are covering gold. It's front page news. It's big news. Our time has come. And we're going to talk about why during this live stream. Silver also doing very well. Let's run out to Pimbex and check at uh, what the spot price is right now. Let's go over there because things are happening very, very quickly, guys. Okay, we have gold again above $2,200. Only 79 cents, but hey, we'll take it. Can you believe, right, guys, four, four or five months ago, if we'd been told that we would have $2,200 gold, we wouldn't have believed them. Silver is knock, knock, knocking on $26 per ounce. We're going to go into why this is so massive during this live stream. We have entered, do you believe? Are you a believer? I'm a believer. You know that, right? I get accused. I'm not getting many of those uh, uh, accusatory emails calling me a silver pumper today, but I believe that we could see that $34 silver sooner as opposed to later. I made a bold prediction several months ago that we would see $2,600 gold by May, $35 silver. We're going to see if it's going to come true, but there are big news stories happening today. Let's talk about briefly what caused this big price spike and, and what it means. <laughs> I can barely speak. I'm so excited as we head into the coming months because I have a feeling if it's going to happen, it can happen very, very quickly. And I'm going to show you why in definitive terms, yes, we have some charts prepared. And yes, our friend Kelton has provided us with an updated chart about silver that's going to blow your mind. But the Fed today, the market got in, in what they said was perceived as being easy for monetary policy. That was good for the price of silver and gold. The dollar index, which we really don't pay attention to because that's just a relative comparison, but nonetheless, it went in the toilet. Obviously, the price of silver and gold went up. This is probably, just so you know, election year shenanigans. We're not going to spend a lot of time on that. But during election years, the Fed usually becomes very, uh, let's say, accommodative. We talked about that. We talked about that months ago. That being an election year, we're going to see an easing of monetary, money printing, right? Unicorn fart dust, paper, whatever you want to call it. It's happening. It's happening potentially right now. OK, hey, if you want to get your hands on some silver or gold before the mad potential mad rush, do yourself a favor. Check out Pimbex. They sponsor the channel. I've worked with Pimbex for almost a year now on a personal level before they sponsored the channel. You're going to get the best best prices, selection and service. And if you ever decide that you might want to convert part or all of an IRA to silver and gold, Throw them in the mix for that as well. I will never tell you what to do. I'll tell you what I've done and what I believe in. And I believe in Pimbex. I got a great email over the uh, over the well, I say weekend. We just got back in town from Branson uh, yesterday from a basement dweller thanking me 
for referring him to Pimbex because he was so happy with the service, the quality, and the price that he'd received. My audio? Okay, hold on, guys. Fuzzy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know, honey. Sorry, guys. Wipe your lens. Yeah, I think we're maybe having a little bit of internet problems. I apologize, guys. Uh, unfortunately, looks like we're having some uh, internet connectivity problems, and there's really nothing I can do about that right now. Oh, shoot. Anyway, I'm going to continue on, and I apologize uh, for, for the poor quality. Uh, I guess I'll apologize for the internet company. Where was I? I forgot. Market's dovish. We got the dovish. Okay. Um, I was wrong. <laughs> Yesterday, I said I didn't know what was going to happen today. I didn't make a bold prediction. I said there was like a one-third chance that the market would go down for gold and silver, a third chance it would stay the same, and a third that it would shoot up. Obviously, we saw the big, big move. Listen, here's what's happening right now. I'm convinced of it. Are you noticing the stair step up that we're seeing in the silver price and the gold price? Be prepared, guys, that we could be right now on the cusp of major, major, major. Uh, okay, the audio is fine. Yeah, the audio is really the most important part. I apologize. We just got back in town. I, I Maybe there's something screwed up with the router or the internet, but thank you for staying with me here, and I'll, I'll do my my best to uh, to present this information to you verbally as well. Yeah, boy, I'm seeing it on my end too. Again, guys, I do apologize. But let's talk about the big deal, why silver and gold could just, especially very, very beginning of a major, major move, okay? Okay, let's pull up some charts because this is where it's all at right now. Here's the first chart that I want to show you, okay? We've talked about this ad nauseum for silver right now. And what's so interesting, crazy about what's going on in the silver market is the fact that it's not just one chart pattern that's occurring. It's several that are occurring simultaneously, a confluence of positive forces. All of these are reinforcing each other. The first one we'll look at is the wedgie. Have we broken out? We're going we're gonna to look more at that earlier. But this wedgie that I drew with the old tidy whities at the bottom started back a year ago. Yes, we've broken out. Okay, let's go over here. That's the dollar index. Oop, let's go back. Hold on here, guys. Hold on here. We also have the major cup and handle formation in silver. Some people are drawing this back just uh, even more recently. We're going to look at another chart, the most, the most explosive chart pattern uh, in, the, in, the, in the most predictable chart pattern in all of technical analysis. Okay, now let's go to our friend Kelton, who provided us, let's go back, bear with me. There we go. Look at that. There's another cup and handle. Uh, Multi-decade cup and handle. That is from uh, Kimball Charting Solutions. That's an old chart from three years ago. You, you can see here that it only goes uh, up through 2018. And, and uh, we were, are we breaking out of that as well? Here we go. I mean, in the silver market, this pattern is considered a bullish indicator and suggests that if silver breaks Don't out, mic, okay, I'm going to ring the bell in a second uh, from the handle formation. It could send a strong bullish price message. The, the pattern has been developing over a long period, which adds to its significance. That is significant. The longer the period. I'm going to ring the bell in just one second here. I'm going to go to, there's the wedgie, that wedgie. Hold on. We have another chart. Oh, my gosh. It didn't pull up. I'm sorry. What, what, what's, 
what we also have going on right now, and I apologize to Kelton, he had sent this to me, is that we also have right now, okay, that's the silver price in Argentina. I'll touch on that in a second. But not only do we have the cup and handle, let me go back to that, okay, the cup and handle. But at the same time, simultaneously, there we go. At the same time, guys, in that handle, which is going to break out, we also have the wedge, okay? The wedge is occurring at the same time and breaking out right now. So it could be crazy time for the silver price. The wedge that you're seeing on the screen right now is on the right side of the handle, on the cup and handle. I'm telling you, just trust me on this one. Believe me, they're happening at the same time. It's a big, major deal. Let's look at gold. Let's look at gold because gold is also, and again, the most important thing to realize here is all these are happening at the same time. They're reinforcing each other, okay? They're working together. It's a confluence of positive chart patterns. And I'm not a chart guy, but these have been uh, going on for decades at a time and so important for us to remember in the gold market. Let's look at this first. Hold on. Cup and handle in gold, right? Back from 2011. Now, not only is there a cup and handle in gold that has definitely broken out. I drew that chart when gold was trying to break out above 2000. But look at that as well. In, in August of 2011, 2000 gold. August of 2020, 2000 gold. At the time we had 2000 gold. That's called a triple top, which is very unusual. We've broken free from the triple top. At the same time, we're breaking free in the cup and handle. You see the cup from 2011 to 2020 in the handle. And I got to ring the bell before I forget. I'm going to ring the bell for the basement dwellers. 10 rings for 100 likes. Thanks for the likes. Thank you for being here. I'm going to talk to you personally here in just a second. And then we have the handle. So at the same time, the cup and and handles breaking out. We're breaking out of a triple top formation, but wait, there's more. There's one more. Hold on here. Let's go look at the inverse head and shoulders. There it is. This is gold. Again, August of 2020, we hit 2000. Uh, uh, March of 2022, around 2000. Okay. That created, imagine that that's an upside down head and shoulders. This point here went about probably, I don't know, whenever nine of 2022 gold, right? Hit a bottom of 1600. That's the head. And then we formed another shoulder to the right of that up to now. We've broken out of that to the top. So we've got a cup and handle breaking out. We've got an inverse head and shoulders breaking out. And we have a triple top formation. These are massive, like the most followed technical patterns in the in the in the world. Because the world follows. Don't we talk about that? The world follows. There we go. I'm back with you. Hopefully, the audio and video is getting better, uh, guys. These th we don't realize this is the whole entire world that follows gold. Actually, in the United States, we're minimalist. <laughs> we don't follow it much at all. Yeah, sure. Our friends over at uh, Bloomberg were kind enough to point out uh, that gold hit a record all-time high. Reuters is talking about they're now every... What's going to happen? Think about it. I want you to think. I'm going to talk personally to you because you've been following gold. You've been following silver for a long time. What's going to happen when, when instead of just two in 200 of us all right, turn into 10 in 200 of us that are talking or or 100 out of 200 when the mainstream, we've not, we're not mainstream, right? We're unique and special, us gold and silver basement dwellers. What's going to happen when your Uncle Fred starts talking about silver and gold? You know what's going to happen. It's going to be a mad rush. The only, the only part of the world that's not buying silver and gold at a record level are Western retail investors. Institute, the institutions aren't doing a lot, but guys, that's the only place in the world. 
that are that is not purchasing record amounts of silver and gold. It's going to happen, okay? And it's going to be crazy time for the silver and gold markets. You know the whole story. We've talked about this at 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 nauseum. There is so much, and that's what those chart patterns sh show us: potential stored up energy in the silver and gold price. It could it could uh, it can make for a very very fun and interesting ride for you and me as silver and gold investors. Please give this a thumbs up. We need a few more thumbs up. Susie uh, calls me here on the walkie talkie. Yeah, this walkie talkie. Uh, when we get to 200 thumbs up, and at that point, let me put Susie right about there. Everybody say hi to Susie. Hi, Susie says hi. Uh, <laughs> I'll ring the cowbell for you basement dwellers as well. And thank you for being here. Thank you for your loyalty over the last two and a half years as we've been doing this. We have, I can't hear you, Susie. You have to hold the button when you talk. Sorry, I cut out. I just love that hand. Okay, Susie loves the hand. See, everybody, everybody say hi to Susie. <laughs> okay, you're here for silver and gold. You've been loyal. Hey, thank you, Don Howe, for the super chat. And I missed one earlier. So I very much appreciate, I think then maybe it was Matt and Craig, thank you. If Craig wants to send me a text with the super chat that I, the channel and, uh, and they're much appreciated. They're like a little shot of a fun and adrenaline, just like the gold and silver market got today. A little shot of fun and adrenaline, adrenaline. I got to talk about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. It's going to happen where it's happening right now. Do you have any silver? Here, here, let me pull this up from our friend Silvershire. Look, huh? Today's a good day for you to play with your silver. This is a dollar forty. Listen, a dollar forty in constitutional silver in a beautiful silver round. This is the only silver I'll be showing you today. Look at that. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Real money. But I gotta tell you, okay. Here's a fact. <laughs> it's I can't. I still can you imported seventy million ounces of silver in February. I know today was Fed Day. Man, we talk about the Fed. The Fed doesn't matter anymore. Okay, the Fed doesn't. I got big news on that. Look, India. What matters to you as a silver investor and a gold investor and a platinum investor is that India imported seventy million ounces. I'm telling you. Go pull up a picture of Arrowhead Stadium where the Kansas City Chiefs play football. And I'm not a football guy. Whatever team you like, pull it up and look at that 70,000-seat arena, empty, empty, nobody in the seats. And then imagine a 1,000-ounce silver bar, a loaf of bread-sized silver bar in each and every one of those seats. And that's how much silver India imported. Hey, thank you, Charles. Thank you for this. Okay, I'll bring in the cowbell. Thank you, Charles. Wow. Another super chat. Super appreciated. A 70,000 seat stadium, empty. A 1,000 a 1, ounce loaf of bread size silver bar in each and every one of those seats. And that was in one month. And that's almost 10% of the world mining production. Yeah, I'm going to say it every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> Right. Andrew McGuire on Live from the Vault told Andrew said recently, right? He said that things are changing in the physical silver market. He was on with Rob Keynes. He said the end of the COMEX could, could, right? Or things could get uh, escalated, quote unquote, like maybe they can't deliver on the contracts. Maybe, right? Not in years, but in months. Andrew McGuire told us what was going on with the Indian silver, the whole wholesale demand for Indian silver two months ago. This guy knows what he's talking about. And I was on a show live from the vault. He's a wonderful man. It is happening. It is happening. And it is happening right now, right before our very eyes. Don't believe the Fed. Don't believe the hype. Remember that song? Don't believe. Do you believe the Fed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, Fed. Fed Schmed. Look, their credibility is being called into question by who? 
by you? Are you are you questioning the Federal Reserve? It's okay to question the Federal Reserve. You know why? You know why? You know, I was driving down the highway today, Highway 44 from Branson, Missouri, back to St. Louis, and there was a FedEx truck in front of me. Very interesting. When you look at the FedEx logo, there's an arrow in it. Uh, it, it there's a hidden arrow between the X, the E and the X, I think it is. I don't know. Anyway, the Fed in the Federal Reserve is no more federal than the Fed in FedEx. They are not part officially of our government. I'm pseudo. Oh, I don't know, whatever. But they're owned by, there's a private bank. And their credibility is being called into question. By whom? By whom? Who dare question the Fed? Well, I'll tell you by whom. By silver and gold, the oldest and wisest markets in the world. That's the reality. That's the deal, okay? We've got a confluence going on right now, which can lead to much, much higher. You know, here's the deal, okay? America is in bad shape. I'm sorry, when 56%, 56, line up 100 Americans, a random sample of 100 Americans, 56%. So 56 of them out of 100 can't afford, can't absorb a $1,000 surprise bill, a car repair, a medical bill, whatever it is. They got to borrow money from friends and family. They got to borrow money on a credit card if they have one. But wait a minute. Let's not forget Americans have record amount of credit card debt. We are in a spiral time right now. It's math, guys. It's simple math. You don't have to have a fancy degree in accounting or finance or be an economist to figure it out. We are in massive, massive trouble. You know what? I haven't been live with you in the basement here for a while. Let's run out just for fun, basement dwellers. Let's just make sure nothing's changed and that our government hasn't found, seen the light. Let's run out to... What does that mean? Susie just moved at me. Oh, the cowbells. I got it. I got it. Okay. Hey, hey, hey we got 200 thumbs up. For those, we got a lot of new people. Everybody's welcome. For those that are new, Joe F. brought me a cowbell. We ring the cowbell when we get to 200 thumbs up. It's a big deal. I need to talk to you personally. And then I'll ring the cowbell. I just want you to know, it's a big deal to me. It's a big deal to our community when you join us here in the basement. We call ourselves basement dwellers. And there's one basement dweller who's more important than any other basement dweller. Right? You know that. There's one. There's number one basement dweller, and that's you. Because they didn't call it Joe Tube or Rick Tube or Ron Tube. They thought about it. No, they called it YouTube. So thank you for being here. It's not, uh, th this doesn't happen without you. It really doesn't. So thank you. Let's ring the bell for you. Where was I going? Oh, yeah. We're going to go out. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I had my share screen on. Uh, okay. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here. This is how you get to the U.S. debt clock. You go to Google and type, oh, shoot. You type in U.S. clock. I make sure that it hasn't, you know, uh, fixed they, that, they're, that they're now reducing the national debt. This is how slow my internet is today. Jeez. I think I need to unplug it and plug it back in. Do, 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 do. I'm tempted to sing, but I won't. Here it comes. Welcome to St. Louis Internet. Okay. Well, maybe it had a hard time loading all these numbers. Lo and behold, the U.S. national debt is still going up. $34 trillion. It was just like 500 before I left on vacation. Oh, it's only 27 billion. 34 trillion, 1 trillion is a million dollars times 1 million. Just absolutely crazy. So look, uh, let's make sure the paper to silver ratio, it's still hovering around 395 to 1. Uh huh. And since the M2 money supply is shrinking the dollar to silver ratio is zero that's because 
as this is shrinking, the only other three uh, 100 days. Let's see what they say about the national debt. The U.S. national debt, the U.S. the national public amount of marketable and non-marketable securities currently outstanding. So that's just the official debt. I think if you go down to the bottom is where it gets crazy. Um, yeah, U.S. unfunded liabilities. That includes Social Security, other things they owe. That's only $213 trillion? <laughs> All right, back to us. So we're back. We're together again in the basement. We are potentially entering party time phase. Don't forget, okay, the bear right there. His blindfold comes off at $2,500 gold. It's going to happen, okay? The silver bear, which is right there, right? 85, and we got a platinum bear at 2,500 as well. Basement, for those of you who are new, I love animals. Those are stuffed animals. I would never blindfold a real animal, okay? It's just kind of for fun. Uh, and that's the gold bear who is responsible for the uh, what was a bear market in gold. He's starting to perk up. It's going to get interesting. When all this comes down, here's what gets absolutely crazy. I want to show you guys uh, because I couldn't do this the other day. So hold on here. Let me pull something up. And where is it? Of course, there it is. There it is. Okay. This is where it gets to crazy town. Right now, we're still in make-believe land with the Fed. We don't believe the Fed. Remember, I was driving on the highway with my dad today, and I was talking to him about the Fed. Said, That's the same Fed that told us three years ago that inflation's not a problem at all. That in, but then inflation was temporary. And then inflation... Hey, yes, over. Uh, our good friend Peter Grandich is on. Oh, okay, awesome. Hey, we want to say hi to Peter, the one and only world-famous Peter Grandich. Hello, Peter. And by the way, guys, don't forget, Peter has promised that he would be here for the, un the unmasking of the $2,500 gold bear. And Peter and I are going to be on together. I think it's, a, it's still about four weeks away, but, uh, but, but you can look forward to another video with Mr. Peter Grandich. And I believe it's petergrandich.com. I'll head out there in a little while and show you his website where you can register to get one of his brilliant uh, daily blog posts. But when it's going to get real interesting, right? This is Exter's Pyramid. John Exter worked for the New York Federal Reserve. Okay. He was a big proponent of silver and gold. Gold and silver, you can see, are at the bottom. Everything else is stacked on top of that. Gold and silver are real money, have been, as we know, for thousands of years. Okay, base money, bank money, government bonds, corporate and municipal bonds, non-monetary commodities, derivatives. I read something the other day that showed the amount of, of options and other derivatives. It's just exploded in the last 10 years. And then on top of that, you've got crypto and crypto derivatives. When that, when that pyramid gets turned upside down, when just a few bricks, and it's starting right now, start to fall out of that upside down pyramid, it's not going to take a lot, okay, for the price of silver and gold to explode, okay? Because there are multiple, multiple amounts more money above resting on that base of gold and silver. It's going to be an, I mean, I, I can't. I can't make a, uh, I can't make a, 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 a an, an absolute, right? This is just what I see. Listen to other people. Listen to yourself. But I believe it has super potential for, uh, for, for, for uh, a, a wave of new money coming into the precious metal sector. Let me go back here. I'm gonna try to show you, and, and I wanna, uh, uh, you know what? Let me go here quickly. It's just, it's it's crazy. 56, Amer 56 out of 100 Americans can't afford a $1,000 bill. And this is where it gets even crazier. <laughs> this is, this is, uh, was sent to me from one of our viewers. Hold on here. I'm going to bring you back up. All right. You got to see this. This will be a quick one. Americans, 
Okay. Not only have they have they blown out their credit card, but this was one of one of the one of you basement dwellers sent this to me. He was getting his oil changed, and he saw this pamphlet. 10-minute economy oil change. Shop now, pay over time. You can now put your oil change on your car on uh, on, on 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 shop now, pay later. I mean, where is it where is it going right now? Right? I mean, the average American has been are you feeling this? The average American has been put because of inflation Okay, because of money printing, and look, the ultra wealthy have done very well in this environment. They 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 don't call when stock prices. Hey, thank you, Stephen, for that super chat. Hold on, I think you need to put a surfboard behind you, Ron. When silver hits two hundred, I'll fly you and your family out to the Gold Coast to celebrate. <laughs> Sounds good, Stephen. I won't argue with that one, my friend. Uh, uh, where was I? Okay, yeah, the average American, right? They the inflation has stolen their money. That's it. If maybe you're like me. I'm we're average American family, right? They don't, but but it didn't doesn't hurt the ultra wealthy because you know what else inflates stock prices? The magnificent seven or the magnificent six, whatever you want to call it now, right? They call it a bull market for the stock market, right? The ultra wealthy own a lot of real estate. They call it a, a strong real estate market. But if you're a lower class or middle class person in the United States, who maybe has to rent. You don't own real estate. It means higher rent, higher food costs, higher transportation costs. It's a hamster wheel that the American public, right now, like 56 out of 100 people can't afford a $1,000 bill. We have a healthy Bidenomics. It's working economy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Okay. And people are getting fed up. Inflation, right? It's a hidden tax, right? And it's not getting any time better anytime soon, right? Uh, it's like the party is over. Let's talk about this easy money, uh, easy money situation, okay? The ones who really got the party were the top one percent, but the party is over. I wrote this out earlier. American exceptionalism. Yes, it seems like our that right now that means that's our exceptional ability. Uh, to borrow and waste money over the last 50 years. Uh, America was built, right? The greatness that occurred, the foundation for greatness in this country was built during a period of time when we were on actually a bimetallic standard for a lot of it, but then the gold standard alone. But we had gold and silver were the base of our money. That was the foundation. What's happened in the last 50 years has been a mirage, Right, it's been a big mirage. And look, the BRICS countries—Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, uh, uh, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates—not the United States. Those are the ten BRICS. They're they're saying party over. I'm going to put it to you this way: Gong. Okay, I got. I'll ring the gong in a second. I'm on a roll right now. It, Susie says hi, everybody. I'm going to have to get this under control. Anyway, the party's over. Okay. Imagine it like this. This is the way I look at it. The last 50 years since Bretton Woods, since Nixon took us off the, the gold standard. Okay. It's like the United States like went on a trip to Vegas with their American Express card. And, you know, American Express says you don't have a spending limit. There's no limit. Right. And partied and partied and partied. But we know, right, there's no really no such thing as an unlimited credit card. And that's what the United States, unfortunately, I don't like it. You didn't do it. I didn't do it. Right. But we're really at the expense of our children and grandchildren spending money that they're going to be responsible for. And the party's over. Eventually, American Express, and think of American Express as the BRICS country says, no mas. No, you can't do it anymore. We're, we're cutting you off. And maybe the world is cutting. And people think this is controversial. Look, look, our founding fathers support me. I believe that, right? The people that are willing to speak up, the the, the people like Pat Holland, uh, our good friend Pat Holland, by the way, uh, Peter Grandage, people are, are the ones that are courageous. And I, I think, right, just my opinion, the real patriots in this country Right? They didn't intend for us to, to, I mean, Jefferson wrote it himself. He said the biggest threat to the United States is not an invading army. Thank you, Craig. Uh, it's not an invading army. No, 
It's big banks, big corporate interest. And that's exactly what's going on. They've been, they've sold out. And I'm sorry, I'm not on a, I guess I am on a rant. I'm also very sick of, on a side note, but I'll save this rant for another day. I am really sick of every time I turn the TV on, which isn't that often, that all I see now are pharmaceutical commercials. And I'm like, what the heck is this? What's our country come to? They're trying to convince me I have plaque psoriasis. And if anybody has that, I'm sorry. But I know if I have plaque psoriasis, I can talk to a guy named Ned. I, I, what's the country come to? I'm, I don't know. <laughs> That's why we buy silver and gold. Because when all this is unraveling amongst us, around us, right? We know one thing for sure. That silver and gold have held, held their money. Okay? The party's over. The credit card, it's done. All right? There's a lot of other stuff going going on. I don't know. Do you guys want to hear about that? I mean, look, I think we're entering into a very interesting phase for gold and silver, no matter how you want to slice it or dice it. What's going on in China with silver? We talked about India, right? India, you know, unbelievable imports in February. I mean, guys, 10% of the world's silver production in one month imported by one country, India. But we know China is sucking in. We know that Rob Keynes pointed out the other day that there's silver companies in Mexico now that are being uh, having projects funded by Tesla, right? Uh, the, the, the silver market has the potential. Haven't we heard that? Haven't we heard for like the last, I don't know, I mean, long time, but especially in the last year, two years, more and more of the smartest people in the room telling us that silver is the most undervalued asset on the face of the earth. Right? We knew that about uranium three or four years ago when nobody liked uranium, when people were looking and saying, look, the demand, you know, the it's, it's kind of supply demand, basic dynamics. And we're faced with that, especially in the silver market. The gold market's a little different. But it also has its own incredible set of uh, positive factors that could lead us into what could be, right? I mean, we're talking potential, like decade-long bull markets. They're saying a commodity super cycle, right? It could include other things, oil, other real assets. But silver and gold are looking very, very solid as we head through the rest of this year. Uh, oh, I got to ring the gong. Man, we have 570 people on here. Wow. Hold on a second. When we get to 300 thumbs up, I ring the gong. Where's the gong? Here's the gong. Yes, you do, ding dong. Okay, Susie, thank you. And... I am truly mesmerized by the gong. I don't understand why when you hit it, it continues to ring for like five seconds. Oh, it's going to be interesting, interesting time, okay? And the young people are getting angry. If you have, haven't heard already, the young the young people are, are a little confused. Uh, Zero Hedge said this, young people sometimes seem to wake up in the morning in search of something to be outraged against. Uh, we are among the wealthiest and most educated humans in history, but we're increasingly convinced that we're the worse off uh, than our parents were, that the planet is in crisis. This is young people, right? This younger generation. And maybe we have some of the younger people on here with us, but a lot of them think the planet is in crisis and it's probably not worth having kids. Uh, then they say, it's your debt, boomer. What most young people don't yet understand, this is interesting, is that we are sacrificing our young adulthood and our financial security to pay for the debts run up by baby boomers. Part of every millennial, I'm just telling you what they're saying here. I'm not saying this is my opinion. Part of, part of every millennial and Gen Z paycheck is payable to people the same age as members of Congress currently milking the system and miring us further in debt. It doesn't work, guys. Silver and gold are realizing it. It just doesn't work. You can't just continue to spend and spend and spend more money than you bring in. All right? It doesn't work. It doesn't matter how big and how powerful you are. Right? It doesn't work. There's simple mathematics behind it. Again, that's why we decide to protect ourselves with silver and gold. It was a, a block 
Buster Day. Oh, I want to take you guys out real quick. Hold on. I would highly recommend this for everybody watching today. <clears throat> There's the debt clock. Still going. Like the Energizer Bunny from here in St. Louis. Energizer battery. Oh, look, the debt went up. I want to take you to check this out. I would recommend he puts out something very interesting every single day, right? And this guy, definite friend of the Silver and Gold Key, and that is Peter Grandich blog. Here it is right here. Should pull up. PeterGranch.com. And there it is right there. And you can sign up on here somewhere. It's easy to do. Uh, but if when you do, right, and you don't get spammed, you don't get anything like that, you get a great, uh, an absolute great, uh, article or uh, insightful video emailed to you every day from Peter Grandich. And on is that where you can where you where you sign up? I don't know. You can you'll have to figure that one out for yourself. I signed up years ago, and I've learned a lot from that. So uh, thank you, Peter, for everything you've done for Ron's basement and for being a great friend. I have uh, the highest of regards for Peter Grandich. All right, guys, thank you for being here today. Okay. Uh, I'll be back, should be back tomorrow morning, back in my normal morning, like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. time. Uh, be well, okay? I, we can't rule out, I don't want to be negative, we can't rule out a potential slam down in the gold and silver price, but it is soon. Thank you.